On today's episode of Metaphysical Mississippi, we'll be speaking with Debbie Lewis. She is a certified Enneagram teacher as well as a Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapist and is also the author of Yoga Nine Ways. Stay tuned as we speak with Debbie, share her origin story with yoga as well as metaphysical things, and of course, what she's up to now and what's to come. Thank you for joining us. This is Emily Hester with uh, Metaphysical Mississippi. Today we have Debbie Lewis. Many of you, you're known in the area for Joy Flow Yoga. Is that right? Joy Flow Yoga. Yes. 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 And um, so I'm just so happy to have you here today. And I want to hear all about your origin story with yoga and what brought you into... um, being interested in the metaphysical, you know, a lot of us grew up in kind of the Christian, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and when you think of metaphysical, you know, that's kind of outside of the, that's a kind of no-no zone to go into. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to hearing um, or hearing how you've incorporated that into, if you are still um, in, in your faith that you chose, how, how you, how you kind of merge the two. That's kind of interesting too. Uh, Deb, tell me uh, a little bit about your origin. Well, well, thank you for having me here. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm glad to share. Uh, yeah, I guess, um, I really didn't know what yoga was. Um, and like many people, I got into yoga for physical reasons. Uh, my neck and shoulders hurt because I was sewing for a living. And I was always like this for hours on end. And this was in about 83, I believe, Um, 83 or 84, I guess. So I stumbled into yoga for pain relief. But my my earlier inklings about yoga were really metaphysical. Um, In college, I I became acquainted with American transcendentalism. And um, I'm also a recovering Methodist preacher's kid, by the way. So um... lucky you. (laughs) Hey, it's better than the Baptist. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, <laughs> well and, 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 you know, my parents were pretty um, educated and um, wise, you know, but still I began to ask questions in college. And um, um, at that time, my mother had met um, a Sufi family that lived in Hattiesburg. I, I was at USAM oh. and she had, she was a full-time nurse for years and years and years and, and had begun to start uh, doing healing touch, which is like Reiki, but this, <gasps> The nurse's oh. version of Reiki. Oh. So the Sufis and my mother doing healing touch and American transcendentalism. I began to read lots and began to realize that, you know, quantum physics and all the mystics and the great religious masters throughout history were all onto the same thing that we are spirit, we are energy. Right. What, what everything is, is energy. Oh, yes. What is that, Sophie? You were just, I'm sorry. Could Sufi. you spell it? What? Sufi. Spell it for me. S-U-F-I. Sufis are the mystics of Islam. And the um Thank you. the 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 aspect of Sufism that I became acquainted with is uh, the Western branch, which is to bring the light and love of universal, you know, oh, spirit yeah, and to yeah. all people and to ha- have everybody understand. It's kind of like that story my dad used to preach it. Um the seven blind men who find an elephant and f- start fighting over what they found. It's, religion is like that. Oh, you know? yes, yes. We all yes. fight over what we think is the truth. And it's all part of the, I mean, you know, it's a big tent. Anyway, so yes. that was kind of my, my spiritual journey. And then then as, as I started yoga, um, and, and, you know, I was so just relieved to have found it it that I cried at the end of every class it was just like such a relief you know and I began to see that it was you know it's not just a physical practice at all and um so I teach you know after about five years I started teaching uh helping my teacher and so I sort of learned the the old-fashioned way being mentored um Mm -hmm. I teach according to the eight limbs of yoga so let me tell you what the eight limbs of yoga thank you because what has become popular in this country is one limb, the fitness aspect of yoga, the physical. That's God. just one limb. Yeah. So the eight limbs are the first limb is the do's and the second limb is the do nots. So it's kind of like the commandments oh, a little bit. And so oh, probably there are, there are the eight of them. Okay. 
Yeah. So the first one is, um, you know, there are five of them and it's kind of, you know, don't, don't hurt people, don't steal, don't lie, that kind of yeah. thing. So, you know, the first one is ahimsa, no harm. And uh, then the second, the second limb is just lifestyle things, you know, cleanliness of mind and body, yeah. you know, stuff yeah. like that, um, how to live and um, how to relate to your environment and stuff. Then the third limb is the postures. Fourth limb is breathing practices, and you can do some profound things with your nervous system just... with changing your breath. And um, oh. you know, I like I love to teach that because it's such a healing, useful tool. Um, so anyway, the first four steps or, or limbs of the path are things you do, and then the last four are all steps towards that meditative place. So we've got withdrawing the senses, which leads to concentration, which leads to a meditative state which leads to bliss so that's where i got the name joy flow it's referring to that last wow. step of you know the bliss comes when we we realize that we're not our body we're not our crazy mind um, we're not our fluctuating emotions we are spirit observing all this and you know yes and uh when we when we get quiet and realize that all that is just it's the temple we live in it's the it's the shell around us, you know, this, then, then we, we, we get that deep connection that, you know, yeah, that we get it. <laughs> do, do, do you have to, do they build upon one another where you start the first and then you, do you master one? And then is it a progressive well, they, limb? Or they it, kind of really or all go together, but um, that's a good question because um, if you don't have a, a fairly clean lifestyle, it's hard to do the physical you know oh, and and, yeah. and then and then if you don't if you ignore the last steps then you don't get what you know i often tell people it's like toward the end we all we start winding down and the last pose is just mm -hmm. to lie there it's called shavasana so it's the language i've is heard the, that term i mean yep, well, I have. it's yes. the best pose but people who are into fitness don't realize it because it's kind of you're just laying there but I like to introduce it as this is the most important and the hardest pose. And now we're starting yoga. That was just the oh. prep for it. Now we begin. And so I Ooh, that once you get it, um, Shavasana is the best pose. And and that's how we should. Wow, that that's the best way to approach life, too, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to just be. Get quiet, be, and yes. observe. And, and as you watch the rattling mind, you begin to realize that your mind is just, you know, it's a computer and it's just always racing yeah. forward and backward and back and forth. And, you know, and um, do, you, do you set aside in your daily practice? Um, do you get legalistic with it? Um, Meaning, you know, Oh, Being dis discipline is not my forte. Yes. <laughs> you just not mine either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what I mean. Like, oh, it's six thirty. I gotta get up do yoga. Or oh, I know. Or, yes. Or uh, the best time to do yoga is first thing in the morning, and I'm not, just yeah. not a morning person. I'm married Me to neither. a musician. I had boys that that were night owls. I'm just not a morning person. Early morning. So mm -hmm. you know. Um. So yeah, I my discipline is is kind of flowy <laughs> you might say yeah. yeah and and you know there are I've studied enough yoga to know that there, there you know you can apply the yoga to what you're needing really and um so I've studied numerous styles I, I yeah. haven't stuck to one style of yoga and um and then I've I've had the joy of mentoring teachers I've for 20 let's see I had a studio for oh, over 30 yes. years and then I've been mentoring students um, with a 200-hour Yoga Alliance program um, oh, for 21 years. Oh, 21. Yeah, I was looking at it on your website, and that is that, uh, well, we'll get to where you're going, what, what you're doing now, where you're going. Yeah, I'll, I'll share that, it. too. I'm excited yeah. to hear about it's, that. It's, um, let's see, uh, where I was going with that was uh, that sometimes um if I avoid doing it for me, I'll do it for my students, you know, and it's like, yes. that's partly why I loved having a studio because it would just, it was my getaway place. It was my take care of myself place. And along the way, I took care of 
everybody else, you know, and yeah. uh, so it's like not that you really need the accountability, but you kind of did. <laughs> Oh, I kind of did. Yeah, yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's um. I mean, I I I dabble in. I I saw that you're an artist, and I I dabbled in art a lot. Right. But I do not do it. I just yeah. Just well, we'll cool. get into personality types, and that'll explain oh, why. Yeah. I'm I'm an artist, and I I teach like an artist too. I I really go with my inspiration, and I build the class according to the needs, and I love to be creative when I construct a class based on what people are needing you know physically mentally emotionally is that called intuitive or not yeah I'm I'm a I'm a I like to call myself a metaphysical virgin I kind of I mean not really well I'm new to everything and you know Krista was in this world and and she just wanted my help to get cleaned up her email box you are you are <laughs> getting a grand introduction then getting to talk to everybody oh, it is but yeah i mean we had spiritual there's been spiritual we've always been very deep talkers and um and it's always conversation and and sharing people's stories and their journeys was just so important to me mm-hmm. and I, I really have felt the call to do this this really this year um that's cool just not being and, and that's how krista and i got to got to know each other i think she did come to joy flow a little bit but later on when i was teaching at soul synergy yeah often I'm she was the only talk. student so we would just talk and talk oh, <laughs> oh yeah. no yeah oh yeah we like to talk uh, well when i'm in the room with my sister i have another sister who's in hawaii so when i'm in the room with them i usually listen because I can't get in a word. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of glad she's not here tonight. No. <laughs> I'm the baby sister and I can talk. No. Oh, I wanted to just say that I remember um, when I was there in the late 90s, probably 97, 2000s, um, I do remember, I think was Joy Flow Yoga in Fondren at that time? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Most of the time I was in Ridgeland and I was in, uh, up and down Highway 51 at different times. Yeah. And then I briefly was in Fondren. Um, yeah, and I remember. Then, and then remember. the last eight years, I guess, I was in Ridgeland again on Old Canton Road. And um, so I had a good 30 year run. I loved having my place. Um, I learned lots of lessons in that last year, though, that, you know, my forte is not running a big business. And, and, you know, it it got to be, it got out of control, people who had different agendas than mine. And, it yeah. got expensive and it just got kind of cutthroat and so anyway I learned lots of lessons so for the last five or six years I've been a wandering yogi without a place mm-hmm. so <laughs> but um well with COVID it just kind of prepared you didn't I really it? felt for those studios that, that that went through COVID and lost so much you know because I had already <laughs> lost everything I didn't you oh. know I was I was planning to travel anyway and um and you know they've either gone out of business or they've had to shift and yeah so it you know sometimes when things oh I've gone through my seasons of you know things Mm -hmm. didn't go the way I planned to plan I know (laughs) but but you know what I really think um What's that saying, you know, that sometimes those doors that get closed are blessings in disguise. Right. So, and that's I, why I'm so glad to talk to you um, and to share this because I'm I've sort of been in that hallway, that that luminous yes. luminal what's the word? Luminal yeah. place of in yeah. between and Oh, I hate that. I I'm in it too. So don't <laughs> feel I mean I think the whole world I, is right now, really. <laughs> we are, but you know, um I had experience in a sound bath with Jason mm-hmm. uh, Lee. Mm-hmm. Just and he took my teacher training. So very much. I thought he had mm-hmm. three months yep. ago, and I had. Oh wow! There, there was a. I had I had that, vi- uh, a visual, in my mind of a door opening and going through. So, mm-hmm. I have really stepped into a different 
and it's so unknown and I'm you know it's I'm still in a very unknown part but maybe it is the whole world stepping in and I going so. through the unknown and it's exciting but scary but exciting scary and and I, I do so, want to talk about Enneagram a little bit too because yes come on um, yeah right. um along <laughs> along the way I got trained in Enneagram yeah. which um and I got certified as a teacher of Enneagram Enneagram is a model of how the personality or the ego works so when you study when you take yoga and Enneagram together you know you get you get to look at how your ego or your personality gets you in trouble because you start seeing things through veils mm -hmm. I like to call it a lens of fear or anger or shame you know those are the three biggies um and there's the Enneagram uh Ennea is nine means nine in Greek and there are nine main patterns that humans do you know yeah yeah, yeah. and so it helps you understand your friends and family and um, how, you know, it, it illustrates how we behave badly under stress, basically. <laughs> but, but it also points to our gifts and how we can straighten ourselves out. So I love to teach uh, what I call experiential Enneagram, which is learning about the Enneagram, but also doing movements and breaths, breath practices to illustrate you know, the healing that can happen when we really understand ourselves. So, so when, when you're coming to these realizations, is it through, um, like I said, I haven't, I haven't read the book or, or to know all the steps that you take, but is it through meditation or concentrating on a certain thing that helps you, you know, to shine exactly, light yes. on yes. what... Uh, unlike astrology, like for yeah. example, where you just plug in your birth date time and all that and human design, I'm kind of studying that. That's like that. You oh, plug in your gotcha. birth date time. Oh, this is not like that. You have to really kind of go inward. And so learning to meditate, learning to listen to that voice mm -hmm. will help you figure out what your pattern is. And so many people look at the Enneagram as sort of a fun little game. And then they look at just the characteristics of um the behavior of the, yeah. themselves or their friends or they they start trying to say oh you're a four you're a five you're a you know they all have numbers but anyway um without really going deeper and so a lot of times we pick the thing that we want to be or we've been oh. trained to be oh. or whatever and we avoid because it's our shadow you know we we avoid really being honest with what's going on in there because once oh. you hit on it it's kind of like oh crap I, I do. I do it. I do that. <laughs> you know? I know. So, so getting to the whole uh, discipline thing, I'm a four, which is the individualist, the romantic, the artist, and so the good thing and the bad thing about a four. Fours are are real connected to their emotions, and I do want to talk about the yoga therapy that I do because oh, it's yes, all about emotions. Oh, yes, yes. Um, we're real connected to emotions, and um have a tendency to not kind of lose track of who who we really are because we we're, we're here then we're here then we're here then we're, we're kind of bipolar really not yeah. not clinically but well, i know what you mean i know what you mean. <laughs> but because of that if we you know with therapy we can be good therapists um but we often focus on what's missing and we have this sort of longing this it's probably lack of serotonin but you know this longing for what's missing and so Ooh. That leads to a lot of creativity, a lot of, um, you know, kind of quirky artists are, are fours. Um, we don't like to fit into the beige box. Um, well, we just can't fit into the beige box. Scrub me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that's just one of nine patterns. And the there's lines between them, too. So it's kind of a really wonderful pattern of how do you get unstuck? And so for a four to get unstuck we move to the one point, which is the reformer and the ones who think very black and white and very passionate about doing things correctly and, um, you know, passionate about improving things, you know? So, yes. you know, so I'm not a one, but I can take on those ones kind of like the Nike, just do it thing. Right. <laughs> right. And get passionate about a purpose. And that helps me get, unflummoxed you might say i mean you're <laughs> right um uh, you're just talking about that i i'm not a scheduled person i'm a wake up whenever i want to person 
Mm -hmm. And I've set my alarm the past two days because I, I scheduled myself these appointments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that, you you're right I, I'm doing a one thing but I that's not yeah. usually how I function so there are tests you can take to figure out your Enneagram type but they're they only go so as far as your only your own self-knowledge and so the best thing yeah. to do is to take a test and then look at maybe the top three or four ones and then just look at them and go huh yeah because we have all of them in us but one of them is our tendency so do you have a class for people where you well yeah let, that brings a, us to what all i'm doing yes. now <laughs> yes yeah we um, want to move on to what okay um i do three things now i mean i i do teach at the y so i'm teaching at the y and that's nice because i've got students and i can yes. you know i'm in person with students again yes yes uh, but the three things that i'm really wanting to do more again um i'll start with the enneagram since we were there yes, please, enneagram please. teacher training and private therapy um so the workshops um i mean i can work with people one-on-one -on, -one on with you know and do consulting with them yes but yes. the workshops are really great fun because we can we can you know share and learn about each other and you know and sharing she shares something and suddenly you understand your mother you know yes and all that. yeah and we combine it um and what my book is based on um it's yoga nine ways um yes uh, awaken to source with yoga and Enneagram. And so that's what I'll, I'll well, everything we've been talking about is awakening to our source, who we really yeah. are, how we're yeah. connected spiritually, energetically, magnetically. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, the workshop can be one day, a weekend, or all week. I've done a all week in, in uh, Greece before. It was really wonderful. <gasps> oh, uh, I read that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And so what the workshop and the book are based on is the idea that we have three centers of intelligence. We have our brain, of course, yes. our intuition, our brain, everything up here. We have our heart, which is really a source of intelligence. In fact, you know, heart math has become a thing and people are beginning to realize people who've had a heart transplant begin to realize that there's a, there's a different energy oh. that comes with that heart organ, you know. <gasps> So, yeah, we're just learning uh, what kind, what the heart until, and this is, of course, our emotional body. And then we have our kinetic body, which is, we call it gut energy. And so we all have all three, but we tend to lead with one of those and neglect one of them. Oh. And so, so uh, I'll, I'll go back to four. As a four, I'm heart energy. My head follows my heart, which means I make decisions based on my heart. And I, then I don't mm -hmm. know what I, why did I do that? Because mm -hmm. there was no logic. <laughs> and then I forget I have a body. So that's why the physical part of yoga is so helpful to me and to lots of people who are like that. And, um, and, and challenging though. And I think that's why a lot of metaphysical people have a hard time getting in the body because they're all up out here, you know. <laughs> I think it's an hereditary. You're which, which, which um, one you're mainly. That's a very good connected. question. I think it is not because um, I've had experiences with twins. Uh, and, and for example, in my own family, both my parents were nines, the peacemaker. Oh, and so oh I goodness. Could, I grew up in a very peaceful home, but uh, having parents that are the same Enneagram type, it did not lead to a long marriage, a, good, a happy marriage. Uh, but when things got tough, they would just stick it under the rug. Yes. You know, and just peace my yeah. along. That's what nines do. But anyway, the, to make the point here is, is there's five kids. I'm the oldest of five and we're all different types. Okay, so it's <laughs> none of us, none not of us are fine. So anyway, I don't have anything on the books right now as far as workshop, but I'm, I'm cooking up some some in, this winter, in different places. Hopefully, one in Jackson. Um, oh yeah. And you know, and it, I'll just put it out there: if there's any group of people who want an experience, it can be an all day Saturday thing. I can come, yeah. and we 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 move, we dance, uh, we laugh, we. I'm, I'm actually certified in laughter yoga. There's I, I saw that on the, <laughs> that's probably something I could really get into. <laughs> I know. When you study the Enneagram, you really just have to laugh because it's kind of, yeah. we, humans, we humans are just I mean, 
something. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I saw some um a ten week. Wait. But yeah, I've that's done it that different... way. That's okay. I've, I've done it that way too, yeah. where we, we 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 took um wisdom of the enneagram, which is one of my teacher's books, and we went through it and it, like the. 10 weeks it's like the first week yeah. is an overview yeah. and then we went to each type yeah. and went in depth so is um is there well i was just curious because i'm not in the yoga world mm -hmm. so is there um i know the new year well you know when january comes around everybody's thinking of let's get healthy is that usually a big time a big push of yep like, every yoga studio you know, every every yeah that's that's when you're like okay everybody starts looking to improve themselves right right so, so you try to draw them in and hope to keep them but <laughs> it's important during the holidays to have those times where you know you can de-stress right too. so right so yeah, yeah. I always say, you know, we're we're now entering twist season where you twist and you wring out all the stuff you oh, like, might eat, like from yes. Halloween yes. all the way through to Valentine's Day, basically. Oh, we're eating, yeah. eating and drinking stuff we shouldn't. So twisting, yes, wringing it out, yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, now, if they are interested, how should they contact you? Um, at my website, joyflowyoga.com, which is also called joyflowinstitute.com. You could do either one okay. and should bring yeah, you there. I'll and, add it. Um, to the and then program. also I'm on Facebook. I post everything that, you know, events on Facebook as well. Yes. Both, um, Debbie Sarasvati Lewis. Um, and Sarasvati, by the way, is my Sufi name. Oh, um, okay. I was that. wondering when, when I saw the two different, I, I was like, which name should I call her by? <laughs> well, yeah, well, Miss, you know, I'm in Mississippi, I mean, Debbie address, works. <laughs> you know. but, but, um, you're always given a, a, a Sufi name when you're initiated, kind of like Catholics do, you know, oh, and, yeah. I, and I wasn't even into yoga at the time, but Sarasvati is the Hindu goddess of arts. She's art, art, wisdom, communication, oh. all the arts. So, so they knew I was an artist at the time. So, so they picked the name. Based they picked on the what name. And then later on, when I published the book, I realized that there was another author named Debbie Lewis spelled the same and everything. Oh, so, I saw that. When I yeah. So I changed it. I, I, I did a revision and started using that name professionally. And also just because, um, I guess I had a midlife crisis, sorta. So, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I started. I using should change my name. I'm gonna call myself a goddess then. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So she she embodies qualities that I aspire to. Let's just yes. put it that way. I'm yes. not traditionally Hindu. I'm I'm a little bit of this and that, really. I guess I, I'm not a I'm not a ism. <laughs> I have no experience with the yoga stuff. So yeah. yoga itself, well, is it a religion? I mean, is it a religious practice? That's a very good question because, and that's, I get asked that a lot. Yeah. Because here I am in the buckle of the Bible belt teaching, I, you know, Hinduism. What? Uh, you know, yes, I know a lot yeah. about Hinduism, but um, yoga grew up in India but it's a toolbox. It's, it's a way of life. It's a, it's a spiritual practice. Yes, it is a spiritual practice yeah. and you can do a spiritual practice, whether you're Baptist or Hindu or right. you know, Islamic or whatever, you know? Um, and you know, it's a, it's a mindfulness practice. So even if you're just paying attention to your breath and moving and, you know, and, you don't have to preach about it. You experience it. So, um, oh, yeah. and the thing I want to say is everybody can do yoga. Um, now what we have now is brands, you know, different styles of yoga with different intensities and challenges. And, yeah. you know, we've got, you know, fam famous pretzel people, young athletes on the covers of yoga journals and stuff. So yes. the average person that I meet up goes, Oh, I couldn't do yoga. <laughs> you know, I'm like, can you breathe? 
that that you can breathe you can do yoga it's just a matter of what pose you can do and what it's, how deep you can do it you know you don't have to put your foot behind your head uh, you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just <laughs> stand on, yeah. you know headstands are not required um, good i mean you know? I, <laughs> yeah, I know I I'm not in the body in in the shape at the moment too. Right. Uh, so I'm so there are different it's good to yeah. know what you're getting into when you enter a class because some kind some forms of yoga are very phys physically demanding and challenging yeah. and if you don't know how to modify then you'll you'll be lost or hurt yourself whatever you know. So well I didn't know about bolsters or whatever all, all, mm -hmm. all the things the um what what are some of the tools that you use in your practice I, and i don't even know if a bolster is considered a tool or is it yeah yes a, well, that's a good uh, question um basically uh, I'll, I'll just and this is the first lesson in my teacher training cl class oh. um is the lineages that i i'm a part of and that really influenced our country um oh. so the first thing they learn is it's the krishna Macharya lineage he taught, this one teacher taught three, mm -hmm. um, taught lots of people, but three of his students came and brought really distinct styles of yoga. The first one was Mr. Iyengar, and he was all about props. So long holds, very, he was a one reformer on the Enneagram, uh -huh. by the way. Gotcha. So, you know, everything's, you know, detailed, perfection, therapeutic. Um, I, it was a really good place to start for me because it was a really good foundation. We never we didn't learn how to breathe, however. We were all just holding our breath and being perfect. Um, but anyway, blocks, belts. In fact, I, I have some blocks nearby. Here's oh, blocks. yes. Oh, uh, that's all I got. My belts are over there. But anyway, um, sticky mat, of course, because, you know, if you're doing wide stands, stances and you're doing downward facing dog where yeah. you're you know like this you don't want to slide or slip you know so they quit using tiger skins a while back and now we have sticky mats <laughs> anyway yeah. um box belts um blankets um for a long time i didn't have bolsters we just folded blankets you know and the joke was yeah. that's the hardest part of yoga is blanket folding because we would we would fold in different ways and you know yeah use, use the blankets in different ways to open up different parts of the body um so that's I mean, guess you get a workout don't you folding up those blankets and uh, well yeah and wa blanket washing day too yeah oh what else? what else there's chairs um we always have walls to lean on so we, mm -hmm. you know a good yoga studio has nothing on the walls if you notice because we're oh, that... we put our hands and we we lay down laying down with your legs up the walls is a divine thing to do yeah really that good for your back oh that does your sound. circulation and everything um so anyway that's that was the first wave of yoga before that it was just hippies and spandex you know and yes whatever you know mm -hmm. um so then the second wave was the, was our original power yoga uh flow and flow kind of came from that where you link the postures together in a kind of a choreo choreographed oh, dance with yes. the breath and that's when we all learned how to breathe and so that was ashtanga yoga and then the third wave was vini yoga where you're breathing in and out of one or two postures and that's so much easier to to teach for beginners and it's also therapeutic so what happened was um these three waves came through and then yeah my little old self in mississippi with raising two kids was kind of in this creative phase just like my mentors in california were and all over the mm -hmm. country western yogis began to sort of put th th these tools all together and come up with um the flow of vinyasa yoga which doesn't did not have a guru did not have a uh, Indian founder or anything. It was a very Western sort of composition, uh, creativity. So we got the breathing from the power yoga. We've got the flow. We've got the in and out of movement with the breath. We've got the alignment and the props, all that. And uh, so that's, and then there are other kinds of yoga. There's Kundalini yoga, which is a wholly different, totally different thing. Um, 
you know, there's other styles of yoga as well, but those were the main ones that kind of informed my practice. So I, I, I still do train teachers. And um, one nice thing about something I do emphasize is then a, a well-trained yoga teacher should not be on their mat doing their yoga while they're teaching. You know, there's, there's exceptions to that. Like when I teach chair class, I'm just sitting yeah, with, yeah. looking at them. But when we're doing flow, especially, or restorative, I'm uh, moving around, demonstrating, helping, yes. and, you know, back when we could touch each other, I would give hands-on adjustments and, you know, um, cause really I can't do my practice and be present for everybody else. So, oh, so I, we work more with that in teacher training. And, and I, I was just going to say, um, I've, I've had to redo the way I do teacher training because we used to, you know, pick, um, you know, eight or nine or 10 weekends and do them at the studio. Yeah. So then I, then I had to find other places. I did it out of my house for a while. And then during COVID, I did it on Zoom. And so I would sit there and just talk and we would, you know, I'd watch yeah. them. Yeah. And I couldn't touch them, but I could give clear instructions. And so, right. um, so I did several, several years of Zoom teaching and now I'm changing it up now. I'm about to start a new format that's a little of both. It's kind of, it's going to be like teachable courses, all the lectures. So I don't have to repeat myself over and over and over. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. yes. And, a, and classes and stuff will all be on, on Zoom that you can watch and then we'll follow up with. And then weekly meetings on Zoom, and then private mentorship, which can be hand, it can be one to one in person or not. So I can still work with somebody who lives somewhere else, you know. I, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I believe I. That's the nice I thing about it. Zoom. <laughs> yes, I'm loving it. That I had a student in Michigan, and then I had a client just a couple of years ago in England. That that's great. <laughs> so you know. I, I'm wondering though, um, what what's what's the setup like? Do you they have to put their computer? I guess right. You have to set your phone or your computer up to where I can see you. Yeah, <laughs> but the great thing is you can use your phone. You can use your That's phone, it. and all. then it's recorded, so I can send it to them. And yeah. so if somebody misses, then I can send it to them. Or if um, they want to review, you know, I can send it to them. Now, are these, when you're teacher, um, I thought I heard you say teacher training. Are you training teachers? I, not training. Are not, not just training individuals to, you're not just doing a yoga class. You're teaching. Right. I'm mentoring people to be teachers. Okay. So, so they already kind of know what the lingo uh, you, okay. you, they should should already have a practice you know I, I recommend at least two years of some kind of yoga practice so they know oh, what they're yeah. getting into um you know but the requirements do, uh, for me for my training the physical requirements are not athleticism you know like I, right. i've seen some yoga student trainings that their definition of an advanced practitioner is you know, wheel, which is the big back bend in the middle of the room, yeah, yeah. drop back into wheel and headstands for five minutes. I'm kind of like, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. But what if you have a neck injury? Right. That's what I, I was. And you're a regular practitioner, but that's, you know, not the pose you can for you. And yeah. I have a neck injury and I teach headstands very cautiously. So I, you know, I was going to say nowadays, what, what do you, um, how heavy is the liability for, you know, like when, when you go in now just to see a doctor to get a prescription or whatever, you know, you have to fill out all, all these right, you know, yeah, papers and uh, and that is a good. Yeah. That's a very good point because as yoga people, we we have you know we have a little bit of A and P, but we're not medical doctors. We're not trained medically, right. and um, so um. We do ask people, you know, what injuries and what what not right. they have, but we really rely on well, what does your physical therapist say to do and not do? Right. And um, you know, you they do have to sign a wa waiver saying I yeah, I was I'm, gonna say that's good. Now I'm I'm responsible for what I would do, and I always say at the beginning, it's like if you if you know that you shouldn't do something, don't don't let me don't do 
Right. Don't do it. You know, right. ask what alternatives there are. And and I do, we're, we're really bad about HIPAA stuff. You know, we, we just yeah. right out there ask who, who's got what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anybody, how's that, how's everybody's lower back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah can your knees yeah. do that <laughs> yeah, but you've um, got to like work that in and well I guess back in the old days you didn't really have I mean in the earlier times when yoga well we didn't have cars to worry about well, these actually, the injuries that we're having with okay. vehicles well in the very beginning it was just um it was taught one-to-one -to, -one to the ind individual for what they needed and now that we have group yeah. classes you know, it's, it has, it's, it sort of has um, transitioned to where you really just need to learn how to take care of yourself. And, and remember that it's, this is not Cirque du Soleil. This is not gymnastics. Right. Competitive. It's not competitive. And we, we Westerners forget that. We yes. Do. You tend yes. To, and, and that's really kind of what happened to my studio is the flow got to where it was very fitness oriented. The music got louder. It's like it got to be how fast, how hot, how well, how can you go? And so yeah. if you think about, is that in alignment with the eight limbs of withdrawing the senses? Right, right. Nope. <laughs> Your joy was kind of flowing away. <laughs> it was no yeah, I lost flowing. my joy flow then during that time. And I've, I'm working to rebuild it. So um, so I'm loving to, you know, I still mentor people. And I'm, I'm loving to yes. bring people, like I mentioned, you know, to open up studios not right down the street from me, but right. Um, right. in towns where that need it, you know, in towns yes. and communities that need it. And um, so, you know, but and, and 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 now going into other communities, not not just having a studio, but like like I love I train. Um, I teach middle school teachers in Florence after that class. So, it's lovely. You know, any, but any group of people that needs some yoga or meditation. And I, um, mean, I think that's a brilliant idea. I mean, I think that's just, yeah. um, so I come to you and, right now, whether, whether you want a yoga class, uh, want yeah. to sponsor a workshop, um, or trying to become a yoga teacher, or, um, I also do what's called Phoenix rising yoga therapy. Um, I saw I'm that on your website. I'm certified in that. So picture this, you don't have to do anything. You just lay them okay. here on my mat. And uh -huh. I'm stretching your body in different ways. So I'm the one doing the work. And your work as, as a client of receiving this uh -huh. is just to go <sighs> falling out breath and relax and pay attention to what comes up when I stretch your body. So you're, you are uh, the person, the teacher is relying on the, well, the, the client has to be act through the breathing yeah so so um and, and so what happens is as you stretch the body and move the body and your awareness mm -hmm. goes to that body part you begin to notice thoughts and emotions and memories and um, all the all the traumas and dramas and yeah. belief systems and stuff of life is in our cells it's in our bodies and when we pay attention to that it, it, we can release it there's a there's a book that's gotten quite popular because it was written by a doctor and it was very medical and talked about post-traumatic stress and stuff body mm -hmm. keeps the score the body keeps the score and he body uh, the body keeps the score is that what you uh -huh. said yeah and there's a oh. chapter on yoga therapy in that and it's kind of like yeah that's what that's what i'm talking about it's like so when you release that there's a lot there's there's a wonderful clearing so um and I'm trained in Reiki and healing touch. So I, yeah. I kind of do that too. And um, we, yeah, yeah I've, I've often wondered when you're dealing one-on-one, -on -one, um, if it is kind of an exchange of energy, or I don't know if it's an exchange of energy, but you are dealing with energy. Mm -hmm. how, how do you as the practitioner keep from absorbing in some of the negativity or you know, whatever needs to be released from them, how do you protect yourself to clear it? Yeah, I've seen I my think sister most clear everybody it off like that or something. <laughs> when she's doing everybody Reiki. you talk to, you know, especially yeah. all the Reiki practitioners, everybody kind of has a kind of a, a ceremony where you center yourself and you sort of um, 
intend that you're protected and you're supported and that you're just yeah. a channel for in for divine energy to yeah. flow through you and to to not you know because they're gonna dump their stuff that's what they're yeah. there for. yeah yeah um, and it, and you just kind of intend that their stuff just dumps and flows on you know and just, uh, yeah but it is funny because I, I cry very easily so um you know so and and I'm trying to bring up their stuff, so we just yeah all cry. we cry together. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I'm like, <laughs> I would probably be a basket case being the practitioner. <laughs> At first, I felt really self conscious because I always cry. Then the feedback is that it's 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 a gift that they feel heard, they feel yeah. witnessed, yeah. and so we all just blow our noses and pass the Kleenex, okay? And and it's beautiful because it just always ends up in a a transformation happens you know and and i love to work with people who have gone through a trauma a lot of times yeah. when people come to me and they're just curious yeah we end up just doing thai body work and they you know they they go away feeling good but when they come wanting to resolve something you know if they've been abused or um you know had a loss in their life yeah. the grieving or you know something to to work through then it is really it's beautiful and transformational and so uh, it's wonderful that you can create an environment for someone to be vulnerable with you because they're being That's very vulnerable. Gift. Yes. <laughs> my yes. gift. But also yeah. I could see it there where ego can <laughs> slip in there like, yes, I can save everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean too? But I'm not saying <laughs> you do that. I'm just saying <laughs> I could see <laughs> where I would start thinking, I'm the healer, you know what I mean? But you're right. You said that you are the channel. You, I'm you just let a channel. it channel. I mean, you let it channel through you. So in fact, we don't even we don't even call ourselves therapists. We call ourselves practitioners of a therapy. Of a therapy. I like yes. Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy. And so and and and, and I just um I don't really do Reiki by itself so much yeah. because this you know I, I like combining it with it, this work yeah, really yes um but right now i don't have a place so i come to you with my big old man yeah. oh <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome because i'm sure i think that there should be a lot of people who feel intimidated going into a room uh right. full of other people like you said the competition the athletic i mean right that's what i was thinking i don't know the nice thing about me coming to you it's it's sort of a marie kondo sort of thing it's kind of like i help you create the space in your house for healing yeah either for yoga practice or to you know release your emotional stuff baggage yes let it go so it, it there's a benefit for me to come to you and course we need to borrow somebody else's house we can but you know right still. right what is the atmosphere in uh, assisted living places That's i have taught yoga there yeah but I, I would think that that would be it's fun um, yeah i've taught i mean there's different kinds of chair yoga classes yeah, yeah at the y right. i really work them hard I mean, we, we, we stand up and hold on to the chair and do power right. yoga, gotcha. um, some, you know, and, or we sit down and we really work our legs. After you do this a lot, your leg gets tired. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, but when I've got to go to like retirement homes, um, yes. it's just real sweet. We, it's, it's more wheelchair yoga. It's, it's yes. And it's fun to, it's, it's challenging to teach because I use my hands when I talk yeah and i talk yeah and so a lot of times they can't hear me but they're doing their hands like i am <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so you know we do we move in you know raise your arms and it's kind of like well that's as high as we go okay good. yes um so there is there's yoga everybody can do yoga and everybody needs yoga and you know you don't have to be hindu um you don't even have to really go into the spiritual part of it. You know, it's just, but yoga means union. It means connection, union mind, connection. body, and spirit, or just mind and breath, breath and body. How are you want to interpret yes. it? It's connection. Yes. And we're, we're so fragmented right now in our world, in our lives. That's true. So, you know, 
really just I think um, we, we have this stereotype idea of what yoga is and isn't, and mm -hmm. it's really just connecting. You know, if you watch your dog or your cat stretch. Oh, yeah. They're just naturals. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> that's that's what uh, they're doing is connecting. They're yes. in the moment, feeling it, stretching. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Downward facing cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. So. Thank you so much for coming on. And oh, well, for not knowing anything about yoga, you asked very good questions. So, <laughs> yeah, I did. Like <laughs> I said, yeah. I, I watched your, I mean, I did my homework. Um, well, I'll get you one of my books. I have a book I'll get oh, you. Thank you. It is on Amazon. It's on I Amazon. Saw. Yeah. And um, so people can get it there as well as through your website, I'm sure. J O Y F L O W I N S T I T U T E dot C O M. Yep. Is, um, and that's boy, you can, you can sign up for the newsletter and I, and you're <laughs> but, on Facebook. Uh, yeah. But if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll hear from me eventually. So, um, and, Wonderful. and, uh, so yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, some things start opening up as far as, clients workshops classes yeah what happens and what i'd love to do is is well i'll probably put them on teachable first but where you can yeah. order like a cd of a yoga class for your personality type <gasps> oh well is there anything else you wanted to cover uh time? Well, I mean, hopefully we'll, we'll revisit. We'll have another chat again <laughs> after you've booked up. I guess that's the main thing. Since, <laughs> since this is for Metaphysical Mississippi, I guess that was my main point is that joy flow is not about being happy and flowing in your body. It points to the fact that we are, you know, that it's a metaphysical world. It's not just the physical. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and um, we tend to forget that sometimes when we're all concerned about our hamstrings and our lower backs and our, you know, how good do we look in our Lululemon yoga pants? And yes. uh, it, you know, it, it's not about that. It's about, it's about spirit. It's about connection. Yes. I love that. That connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and a big phrase that I've learned today is do no harm. Do no harm. <laughs> That's right. Spirit. And at the harm. end of class, when we, we say namaste, you've heard that word. Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. okay so it's a greeting in India. That, that just uh, literally means I honor you. I, you know, so you're not bowing to the yeah. person, but, oh, so, yes. but you're acknowledging them. Yes. And so it's like the light in me, the light and spirit of me sees and honors the light and spirit of you. Oh, that is. And so beautiful. in traditional yoga, you know, you do that at, do the, the, at the end of class. It's namaste. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> namaste. Yeah. Do you have to put your hands together? <laughs> You don't have to. Or, or is that don't. just uh, uh And some people don't because it's kind of like, well, we're kind of borrowing their tradition, you know, but yes. it's, it's become a thing in yoga. Um, yes. And it's a little controversial to in, to Hindus, to Indians, because they say, oh. you're not doing it right. But I don't, that's the way I was taught. Yes. So. yes. And so, can, I think of it, have you seen the movie Avatar? I have. It's okay. Been a while. You know, they say, I see you. Oh, yes. I like yes. to sort of make that reference because that's kind of what it is. It's because, you know, I see you beyond your outer package. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, thank you, Debbie. Oh, thank you, Emily. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us. And thank you. Check out um, Debbie's website. And we'll link that in the show notes as well as i will yeah i think i have it now where if you do joy flow yoga or joy flow institute.com okay get, it'll get to the it'll get to the same thing yeah and then there, right. there's a link at the bottom of each page to join the newsletter if you wish oh wonderful make sure to check out our website m-e-t-a-p-h-y-s-i-c-a-l-m-s.com check out our area yoga classes. We offer a calendar, which you can view by week, month, or daily to find out where your area yoga classes are 
location, time, and contact information for those teachers. The views expressed by guests of Metaphysical Mississippi are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent.